leave a voice message for mm -hmm. the little version of yourself that is preparing to deal with what you just got through. Okay. The little version of me, I would tell you, don't run from the fire. Be in it. Take hold to it. You are that fire. Even if the ashes come, rise up like the phoenix girl. You can do it. I promise Alive. you. All that you've dealt with. And even you can't even take yourself off, so you're kind of stuck here. <laughs> so, you are incredibly strong and resilient. Alright, what up though, what up though, say your name and where you from? I am Jazz, I'm actually from Fort Wayne, Indiana, mm -hmm. so a couple hours away. Okay, welcome, welcome. Hey y'all, I'm Zipporah, um, I'm claiming the west side of Detroit, but the west side of Detroit don't claim me, so <laughs> it could be like that. You want my name, name or my name? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, you control the narrative, huh? Okay, well, um, I'm Shamayin Shanti Star, aka P the Poet, and um, I want to start with that, if that's okay. Um, it took a while to accept my name. I didn't know how to spell it. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know where it came from. I couldn't look for it. There wasn't um, any like keychains for me. You know, like one of those girls. The I got Shama Hama Mama, Shama Lama Ding Dong, Shim Sham, all the shit that wasn't my name. And it's okay to laugh because it's true. Um, but my name means heaven. You can call me Heaven if you like. Um, my middle name means Warrior, and I am very strong, and my name means Star. I am as bright and as ever flowing as I possibly can be, and I hope that y'all feel it. Go on, thank you. Oh, I'm from the East Side. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am Naomi Shikana, that is the name that I go by out here. I am from Detroit, Michigan. I'm from the west side. Can you heard me? Uh, my name is Ireland Ellis. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Okay, east or west side? Oh, oh okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, elegantly banging the sit. I love it. Hi, my name is Aaliyah Ray, and I am a singer, and I'm from Detroit, west side. What's up? Okay. Yes. What's up? Okay. So hi, I'm Alexis Jordan. I'm from Rochester, Michigan, and I'm a model and brand ambassador. Yeah, all that. Right. Bag of cheese. <laughs> My name is Imani. Um, I'm from Detroit. Moved around a lot of different places, but I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Okay, Detroit. Oh, we love it. Um, I'm Jo Joanna. Trip Joanna. I'm from Michigan because I moved around a lot. Come on. <laughs> My name is Carmen Michelle, Carmen Sheffield for the government. I am from Detroit, Issa. Okay, okay, we got a little balance in here. <laughs> I'm learning to love about myself. One, my creativity. Um, and also, how passionately I love people. Because I used to think that was a weakness. It may come to my detriment sometimes. Um, I may end up with the short end of the stick sometimes. But I'll never say sorry for how much I love people, so yeah. The first thing that I'm learning to love about myself is my resilience. And the second thing is, mm -hmm. gotta think about that one, but, but my resilience, I would say it's like a very touchy situation for me. I've been through a lot and it's like, even being here with all these women and just seeing them talk and express themselves, I never had that. I never had that 
space or that opportunity to be able to be like, okay, this is how I'm feeling and this is what I'm going to say. And I'm going to say it how I'm going to say it and that's just what it's going to be. So when I say resilience, I mean power. I mean strength because it's been a lot. It's been a lot. Another thing I'm learning to love about myself is my passion, I'm passionate. I'm a passionate lover. So when it comes to being a passionate lover, it's a lot that comes with that. Being a passionate lover, you have to really restrain yourself from loving certain people because they don't deserve it. So when you a passionate lover, my advice is give love but be cautious who you give your love to. Because some people can definitely take it for granted and take advantage of that. So I'm going to give my love. But I'm going to tread a little lightly. Um, I'm learning to love my patients. Uh, but most importantly, I'm learning to love, I'm learning to love my silence. And um, I say that because there are a lot of times where like I get really big feelings and I'm like, this is some bullshit and like I'm ready to go postal, you know, those cancer placements again. Um, <laughs> but, and it's so irritating. If anybody else in here feels it, give me a snap because there are times when I am so mad and like I just want to feel and I just want to do something just so angry and like my higher self is like, no. And I'm like, what the fuck you mean? No, bitch, I'm mad. Like, I'm <laughs> but I'm also learning that that's where my power and my composure is, is because it's not always my responsibility to act. And you get a lot more <laughs> of an authentic life lived and, and impression of other people when you allow them to be themselves. And there's more power, more power in allowing people to be themselves. And it's less of a choice when you choose yourself because of that. Mm. Okay, I'm learning to love my light, and I'm learning to love my, the very essence of me. So what I mean about like my light is, I tend to attract a lot of things, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, good, and then, you know, also, you know, the opposite of that and um it has made me feel sometimes like i had to dim my light you know for like other people but then it you know in the process of dimming my own light it would um make people not see what you know my full potential is um because you know like for a while growing up i was always made to feel like um I was always wrong about something, you know? So it's like, you know, I could be sitting down, oh, what's wrong with you? Like, nothing, like, you know? Like, I was always made to feel like I'm doing something wrong. So like, or even like, when I was happy, sometimes my happiness would make other people feel some kind of way. Or, you know, if I'm, if I'm feeling good about myself or, or whatever, it, it can make, you know, someone else feel a certain kind of way. But, you know, I'm such a humble person, but I'm learning to love my light and I'm learning to, you know, shine upon it unapologetically and, you know, just spread love. I love my creativity because my creativity, it allows me to express myself. And that's the most important thing to me, because like I said, I had a hard time expressing myself, like, you know, growing up. So, but now I'm just the most expressive person ever, if you like. If, for those of y'all that really know me, like, <laughs> expressive. I'm just <laughs> expressive and creative. Okay, so uh, the first one is my experience um, because it's so unique. It's very unique. I'm 25 years old, and the more I interact with people, I realize that I'm not the only person that feels that they're not quote unquote normal or uh, fit in. We don't understand really anything that was going on. We all are just experiencing life the way it's handed to us and given to us. And I've always hated it. Um, y'all gonna make me cry. <laughs> you 
I've always hated it. Um, Cause it's tough. Nobody else can see it the way that you see it. So loving, loving getting up in the morning and experiencing God, y'all got me in the first question. And I'm crying too, so just one more time on. <laughs> I'm a little emotional, I'm a little extra emotional, but just having that, like waking up in the morning and saying, okay, I got this, you know. You got it. Nobody else can tell me what's gonna go on in my day or how I'm gonna experience it, meaning that nobody else can shift how I'm gonna feel through this day. Like having that power and that sense of trust within myself, I'm learning to love that because I haven't always trusted myself either. Um, that's one. I also forgot the question again. Uh, two, uh, what, I said, what are two things that you are learning to love about yourself? Okay. Um, the second one is that I am, uh, I mean, I'm super friendly. I love to be inviting. I don't feel that rooms and spaces like that are open to everybody where everybody can just feel like they can flow with everyone. I just want to be that extra person in the room that gives that space. So it could be a room full of people that are inviting and then a couple of people who just feel like whatever, whatever. But I'm learning to love that part of me because I've also been very like standoffish um, because I'm afraid of myself. Not anyone else, just kind of like getting to know myself was hard. So as you can see, I'm a little timid, <laughs> a little timid, but not really. It's like I'm, I'm getting to learn to love who I actually am. And instead of being afraid of her, I'm trusting her. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's opening space for everyone else. So I'm learning to love other people within that space. Cause I've been very full of myself in a room and it's no room. Um, so I'm learning to love that. Um, this one's kind of tricky because like one of the things about me is that I'm really positive about myself. I think really highly of myself. My confidence and self-esteem is like, like really high. So, um, but one of the things I can honestly say is like accepting being a black woman, honestly. And one of the things about that is growing up, like it's, it was honestly like kind of tough. Um, being I had to like bear the load a lot in my family. So I felt like I had to grow up really fast. I like, growing up I heard like a lot of people saying, you're so mature for your age, you're really intelligent. Like you talk like, you know, like you, I grew up in predominantly white schools too. Like we bounced around a lot. And so with my siblings and my parents like dealing with divorce and abuse and everything, I felt like I had to face the world like fast. You know what I mean? Um, handling adult conversations at like six and trying to explain to police or neighbors about situations or things that they may be hearing mm -hmm. and being like, oh no, like just sounding like right. a little lady, you right. know what I mean? And trying to explain away a lot of things. And yeah, just, and in that reality, it's just like, I realize like a lot of black women feel the same way I do. Mm -hmm. And it's like a, it's a, it's, I don't want to call it a burden because I love being a black woman. Like, we bad, like, right, smart, right. like, right. we're everything. Right. Um, but just what comes with that is a really huge burden and responsibility. Yeah. Um, black women built everything and we're still building everything. Right. So it's, while it's like a strength, it's also a burden. Two things. And it's funny because every time you ask this question, my answer changed for every single woman that's been up here. It changed. Like every time I hear that question, it changed. Two things I'm learning to love about myself. The fact that I see the light and love in every single person I meet, no matter how good or bad they might be for me. Because, um, you know, people are like, you got to watch who you around and don't go around this person. They, not, you know, they might not have the best intent, but it's just like, but I do. And... I know that they can, they might not see it now, but the bit that I do see in you and what they're putting forth, like, I'm gonna honor that. 
even if they don't feel like the need, they need to like honor it in me. Like you got light, so I'm gonna treat you as such. Um, so yeah, I see the light in everybody and that doesn't always bring me the best situations, but I don't regret it. Like I love every experience I've had because I choose to honor the light in every person I see. Um, it's hard. <laughs> and then I would say, like existing, like just me as a whole existing, like all forms of me, the forms that think you going crazy because you've seen some junk and you be like, yo, that's the matrix. And I'm like, I know, but you're not crazy. <laughs> they probably look at me like I'm crazy and I'm like, it's all right though, because this is real. <laughs> so learn it, like loving every single part of me, the parts that feel crazy, the parts that feel sad, the parts that feel happy, the parts that just be like, Fuck it, I'm just about to sit here and be sad and just eat a whole bunch of shit that's not good for me and all that, like, loving all of that, too, because it's me. So, that, and the fact that I just cut my hair and I'm used to having it, and I was, I never had it this short, so now I'm looking at me. <laughs> this is what I gotta look at. I'm like, and I'm like, you know what? We can get with that. Yeah. You, know? love you look beautiful. That. <laughs> Two things I am learning to love about myself is my mental, and um, how my mental and just my personality, I would say. Is there something specifically about your personality that you feel like you haven't been given enough love to? Um, that I know the difference between loving and caring. Okay, you're a poet. <laughs> All right, I, like that. I would probably say the amount of space that I take up physically. Um, and then energetically, I've never been like super small. I have no desire to be super small. I love being the size that I am and literally taking up this amount of space. And um, I also just like the amount of space that I take up energetically because I've always kind of been um, a lot, told I was a lot. It used to be too much, now I say a lot because it's not too much. Mm -hmm. But I was kind of made to feel like it was too much. And so now, I know it's not too much, so mm. I like it. You better say you better talk your shit. <laughs> um, my slow pace and my personality always been kind of like strange or like just quiet, shy, whatever. So I'm just learning to accept that everybody is not for me and I'm not for everybody and that's okay. Because, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then my slow pace, uh, People give me a hard time about that, but everything for a reason. Everything worked better when I'm on my own time. So I'm just, yeah, I'm I like better that. now. <laughs> mm, I like that question. Um, I think for me, since I also like work out a lot and that's a big part of myself and my self love journey as a whole is understanding that even if I have goals, no matter what, it's not going for perfection. It's just going to make myself a little bit better each and every day. So I think it's stop striving for perfection is something that I'm learning to love about, about me. Um, and then another thing, I think, just even with the clothes that I wear, I think there's some things that maybe I'll put on and still feel a little insecure, like, oh, this is showing my stomach, or maybe things that I don't like, but just being more confident and knowing that I'm eventually going to get older. I'm not always going to be 25 and looking 25. So while I'm this age and in this body, let me love it every single day and continue to show it and not let clothes hold that back. You better talk your shit. <laughs>